Well, baby, I'm on it with a bottle of wine and an old dirt road. Are you ready to go? Thanks for joining us today on Live Music Nation podcast. I'm your host, Jake Gill. We are with Delisa. What's your last name, Lisa? Spurgeon. Spurgeon with Stage West Entertainment. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to mispronounce your last name. So I just <laughs> as you go through there. And you just told us that you have uh, you purchased this agency in 2009. I have a lot of questions for you today, and a lot of them are going to be centered around you're a female in the music industry, so it's a side that I don't get to see a lot of, so I'm right. very interested. So tell me a little bit about your agency and what you do. Okay. Well, the agency was started back in 1988, I think, Um Actually, my mother and my best friend's mom, I was working for, I was an entertainer working for an agency and my agent was older and he passed away. So they started an agency to book me. And then when they retired, I bought it. I retired from the road pretty much performance wise and took over the agency. So spectacular, spectacular. Um, what do you specialize? What are your acts? Who do you represent? Um, I handle mostly country music uh, and gospel music. Uh, I specialize mainly in fairs and festivals and that type of entertainment. Uh, I handle a gentleman by the name of Phil Vandal, who is part of the Gary Sinise Foundation that travels all over the world um, entertaining our troops and Wounded Warriors here at home. Um, and then Eastern Heights from Branson. There are some young guys that are just really hitting it hard. They've done really well since we started with them. Um, and a lot of small regional groups. Good. <laughs> Excuse me. What happened during COVID for you guys? Did you guys completely shut down? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I think I, I don't remember how many fairs I had booked, but out of the I think there was something close to 60 and out of those, I think we had four. <laughs> so oh, wow. pretty much I do have to say most of them were gracious and you know, they, if they had that band booked, they rebooked them for when we opened back up. So it was pretty hard on entertainers through that because they had nothing and most yeah. of them couldn't draw any kind of unemployment or anything. So, right, right. right. What um what did you learn through the COVID process that you're going to continue to implement post COVID? Well, um, mainly being understanding. You know, I know a lot of agencies went out, and even if the fair had to cancel, they still charged them the um, you know, cancellation fees and things like that. And I just didn't. I told our acts, you know, we we need to think of everybody that's involved in this and how it's affecting everybody. So, you know, it, we didn't charge any cancellation fees and I would do that again, all over again. You know, if, if it's something that a fear absolutely can't help, we shouldn't be punishing them because they have to cancel. Yeah, very good. Very good. You've been in the industry a while as a performer and now as, as an agency. Um, right. As a, as a female, how are things? Um, do you sense any inequality? And if so, how so? If you do not, how do you see the future for women in the music industry? Um, very, I don't know that I see the inequality as far as being treated differently by my, by other agencies, but in the fair world, it took them a while to think that I could handle you know, production and all of that kind of stuff, because that's typically a man's world. So um, it, it took me quite a while for people to say, oh, yeah, she can handle it. Um, in fact, I produced the showcases at the Missouri and the Kansas Fair and Festival Association, where we have eight bands going in a matter of two hours, get one off, put another one on, it's just back and forth. And I've been doing that for six years now. So but I kind of had to prove myself. Sure. Sure. Do you, do you feel like that was because you were female or because you were new? I think it's because I, I was female. That's fair. I think if it had been a man that walked up and said, oh yeah, I can do that. They would have just said, oh yeah, you can. But I had, you know, I had to like really show them I could. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. All right. So let's, let's go back a little bit. Let's, um, if, if you were 
talking to a 13, 14, 15 year old girl who wanted to get started in the music industry, what's some advice you would give them? For the music business as a performer as, as, yeah, as let's, an agent? Yeah, let's start as a performer. As a performer. Um, just surround yourself by really good people who, you know, who you know have your back um, because there are a lot of take advantage people in this industry. Um, and just work hard and be really a genuine person when you go out. You know, I think ego kills more entertainers than um, than you can expect that it would. You know, people don't like to deal with an ego. So always just be a genuine, nice person. That's great. All right. Now let's flip to the agency side to a young lady who wants to get started in the music industry on the agency side. What advice would you give them? Um learn their business, you know, go out with bands and learn. You should know both sides. You know, you, a lot of agencies don't know what bands go through on that side. They just go out and book entertainers and you really should know so that you can be fair on both sides. Um, yeah. Most of my bands, that's what they really like about working for me is because I understand from being a performer, what it takes when you get to a fair, you know, and you, you've driven all night and, and a lot of, I, I would just tell them to go out, learn, learn how the road is for an entertainer and then go to the other side and learn what it takes. Cause most of your, if you're in the industry, the way I am with fairs, you know, you're dealing with people who aren't show producers. They know nothing about what it takes to put on a show. So you're working with hundred percent volunteers that have no experience. Um, I would say go learn, go to your county fair and volunteer one year and learn what it takes to put on an event like that so that you kind of understand where both sides are coming from. Yeah, no, that's excellent advice. That's excellent advice. Let's talk the bands and the acts that you work with. What do you look for when you start working for an act or a band? Number one, talent. Okay. Um, number two, um, showmanship because anybody can get up there and sing, but it takes a, you know, an, a really good entertainer to truly entertain people. Um, so I look for a lot of showmanship and how they relate to the audience. Um, and then the other aspect is, like I said, how, how they act when they get to the venue so that if for some reason I'm not at that venue, I know that they're going to handle it with, you know, good intentions and not cause any problems and be good to the people that because like I said we we deal with volunteers in the fair industry so sure. they don't they don't know what they're doing in fact I had Phil Vandal went to a fair a while back and um every time they start their sound check they were blowing a fuse it was a brand new venue and so he went out and he actually was a he's a licensed electrician by trade so he went out and uh, he told them, go get me these things. And he rewired their barn so they wouldn't have that trouble anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, not everybody can do that. No, no. <laughs> or at least legally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun here. What's the three best concerts, the three best shows you've ever seen in your life? Well, I'm an old school girl because I started when I was real young and I, uh, but I opened a lot of shows for Chris Ledoux and he has to be the ultimate concert. I mean, Chris Ledoux was amazing. Um, Merle Haggard. Okay. And um, probably, gosh, the third one. I've seen so many. Um, I would have to say, and I don't know, there's so many then. Probably Ricky Skaggs. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Past, present, dead or alive, if you could be the booking agent manager for any act, who would it be? Um, if I could be for any act. Dead or alive? 
I would say probably the Rolling Stones. <laughs> all right, all right. So you went, yeah, yeah, there you go. I was expecting Chris Ledoux, but you went a whole different genre on us, so. Yeah. That's very good, that's very good. What What's some good advice that you can give? Um, let's talk to the general public for just a second. Maybe they're, they're hesitant about getting back out. Um, maybe they're, I mean, everybody, it just seems like it's gonna be a new strain every six months. What, what piece of advice can you give when people that are watching know that you have booked an act and are producing this event, what's, what's some advice you can give them to make them feel better about that? I think just do what you're comfortable doing, you know, especially in the fair industry and the, the kind of fairs that we do, a lot of them, you know, they're bring your lawn chairs and sit out in the in a big area um, and you can spread out your outdoors. I think those events are pretty safe where you, you're you not elbow to elbow in some concert venue like the Sprint Center in Kansas City or something. But I think just be comfortable with what you're doing. And I think most everybody's trying to be as safe as they can by, um, you know, using hand sanitizer and things like that. Yeah. Um, I just think we all have to do what we feel is best for us. Yeah. It's yeah. such a, you know, mask and everything is such a political thing anymore, but I think you know you, and if, you know, you have a health condition and you feel like you need to wear a mask so you can go to these things, wear them. If you feel comfortable that you can go and not, by all means, that's what you should do. Sure, no, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you for letting us pick your brain, giving us oh. <laughs> some input and some feedback onto how things are. Well, baby, I'm on